Is the rain causing y'all any problems with practice? I know you got the mic and everything, but uh, is, uh, are you, what are you working through right now? Yeah, we've been really fortunate earlier in the week. Our, we have such a great grounds crew and staff. We've been on the field um, every day except today. So um, we've been super productive, I feel like, this week. So I think they're very prepared. And then today we were able to use football indoor and the mic, and we still got a lot accomplished and stuck right with our pregame routine that we would have normally done outside. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of vibe do you, are you getting from the team? Uh, is it what you want to see uh, going into a regional? Um, I think they're anxious, you know, excited. I think all the things you would normally expect. I do think that they feel prepared. I think they feel like they've worked hard. Um, and I think you can draw some confidence from that. But there's definitely a sense of anxiety. There's a lot of young ones that haven't been here before. So, um, you know, hopefully we can turn that into excitement and fun and come out on the right end of this. Is there anything that's a concern? Uh, Y'all seem to do a lot of things uh, well, but but nothing great. I, I don't know if, uh, if, if you would agree, but uh, uh, just you, you seem to have all aspects of your game, like where you need them to be. Yeah, maybe we do all three of them great, and you don't notice <laughs> one stands out more than the other. So yeah. I'm going to stay with that. I think we're we're pretty good on all sides of the ball. Coach, considering uh, who's coming to town, do you have to make maybe urge your fans to go get those tickets and make sure that there's a lot of purple in the stands for this regional? I think the fact that you have two schools from the state of Louisiana, that's definitely a real thing and both schools travel well. So yeah, we'd love to have a lot of purple and gold in the stadium this weekend, but I think it's also a cool moment for the state of Louisiana. Just to think about how strong we are in the sport of softball. Um, I think sometimes that's overlooked, but um, I think we have a really strong regional with three strong teams from the state of Louisiana. Obviously, I mean, I'm assuming you were very excited when you found out it was 100% uh, for this weekend. Definitely. You know, I had been talking all week about I'll take the five Tiger fans over 5,000 somebody else. But if I get the shot at the 5,000 Tiger fans, I'm for that. There's no question. <laughs> Coach, I think how cool is this for you guys also considering that you guys didn't get a chance to do this last year because of the pandemic. Does that just make this moment even more exciting to be able to host a regional and if you get past your super regional as well? Yeah, there's no question. And, you know, honestly, I, I think that we were fortunate to get this national seed, but we were just fortunate to play on another week. Um, I really feel that way. Um, that it was so heartbreaking last year that we're just happy to be playing softball this time of year. We're happy to be in this final group. I know there's some great teams that didn't get to play on this week. So um, we're just happy to be playing and happy to have another weekend here at Tiger Park. Coach Shelby talked about how when she was in the super regional against Minnesota, she kind of let the moment be too big. How do you keep these younger girls kind of focused and sharp and not making it more than what it is? I think it's tough, you know, but I think we just have to keep reminding them, keep reminding them it's just another game. Plate's not any further. The bases aren't any, you know, any closer. I mean, it's the same game they've been playing for their whole lives and just try to keep them loose keep them fun. I talked yesterday in the dugout, just at the fact that they really have already won. They've done so many great things this year um, that they have won in so many other ways. And of course we want to go to the college world series. And we all agreed to that. We, we understand that, but um, I think, you know, they can't put their whole identity on winning and losing this weekend. You, one, you can't function that way. And two, it's not real. That's not true. Um, this doesn't make or break who they are as people or softball players. So I think if we can go at it with that attitude, we'll end up in a good spot. And what are you expecting to see from McNeese? Obviously y'all shut them out in game one of this season, but it's a totally different ball game now. Yeah, it was like 20 degrees that night too. So I think um, they're a very different team. They have different kids in the lineup, even different people have emerged probably for both teams the same way. It's hard to think of your own team, um, you know, through that process because you're so close to it. But um, just being removed from them. I mean, their lineup's different. Their personnel looks different. So um, that'll be a completely new feel and a completely new game. And we know they're talented. Um, we know they're capable of beating anybody out there. So um, we're going to have to show up and play well. Coach, uh, you mentioned that McNeese opening night. I'll, uh, just for you, I have this tape measurement. I've had this on since opening night when you had this in your pocket. 
opening night. But I, the reason I bring that up is how has your team grown from that night to the present now? What's the biggest growth you've seen from your team in any particular area? I think they have grown a lot. And I think every time they take the field here this weekend, they'll still be growing, um, which is the cool thing about it. I think they're learning every time they go out there and just um, learning as much about how to play softball and having a higher IQ and making the right choices, but learning how to battle through adversity and how to be in tough spots and how to handle the big moments. I think that's what they're just continuing to learn. And we've seen huge growth in that. I mean, we've had our backs to the wall in virtually every SEC series of the entire year and have still managed to come out, um, you know, and win eight of the 10 series that we were in. And I think we won two first games. So these guys have had their backs to the wall and have been able to figure it out. So I would say that's the biggest spot where I think um, they have grown. Obviously with your region, you always get a tough regional because of your state. I mean, it's so much talent with Louisiana then, of course, region with McNeese. I mean, do you like, do you wish the tournament was more national and you didn't see the same teams over and over, or does it really matter? I do think it's fun, you know, watching George Washington walk in here today, and it's fun. Like, they're getting to see a completely different side of the country. They're getting to have a completely different postseason feel. So I do think there's something to that. That doesn't mean I want to leave Tiger Park. Don't get me wrong here. So I'm happy to stay home right here. Um, but it is kind of nice to just – get some new looks and some new faces but i think that's out of our control we respect everybody in our state we know we're it's going to be tough this weekend we know that we're always going to have to go through these guys if we want to play on and i'm sure they feel the same way about us coach how do you adjust i guess your coaching style in uh once it's kind of real postseason now do you where, where do you got to make changes to kind of a smaller lineup that you're going with relying on less girls pitching staff wise how do you kind of adjust now that it's really the postseason it's really you got to win every game yeah hopefully we don't hopefully we've been doing it all year and hopefully we stick with the plan that we've done all year um, we did get a smaller roster size than we've had all year but i don't think um, it will change. We may manage some things different. Pinch runners, um, defensive specialists might get managed a little bit differently because of the roster size. Um, and I, I do think it is a um, it, it's really unfair in a COVID year that we're we're stuck with 20 people on a team where we have 28 players and plus five due to COVID. So um, baseball gets 28, I, I believe, and we get 20. So um, I am concerned about that. And I, I hope that that's an adjustment we can make moving forward because we have functioned using, I mean, I use 17 players um, uh, against South Carolina in the SEC tournament. So um, I think it, it is something that needs to be adjusted in our sport moving forward. Why did why is it at that number? Do you know? And you know what, what kind of challenges does that kind of entail for you guys? And how did you choose who you decide to actually have on the active roster at twenty? Um, you know, just based on playing time, ultimately based on you know the the right personnel for who could help us. So we do get to have twenty five in the dugout, but there will be some not dressed. That that isn't final until this evening, um, but um it's it's tough it's heartbreaking for girls that have been dressing and traveling with us for the entire year we've had 25 the sec is normally at 20 and they bumped it to 25 due to the covid year the ncaa did not follow and make any adjustments so good i think yeah. William oh well i had a question about uh just to kind of follow up on what you said earlier how do you think fighting back in all these SEC series. Like you said, it seemed like you, you, often you always lose the first game and then come back to win a series this year. How do you think that, that can uh, benefit you or, or play to your uh, to your advantage or that's something you can draw on in postseason play? Yeah, without question. I think hope is such a big factor. It is so important. And I think once you've done that, you give yourself hope that you can, right? So our team has proven that they can come back in these situations and they can do this. Like no matter the situation they're put in, how much we go down, whatever it is, like we're going to have hope that we can fight back. I think they have shown that they've shown they have guts. They've shown they can fight. Those are the things that are important this time of year because everybody's talented. Everybody earned the right to be here. They all beat somebody to be here. So um, you're going to have to fight for it. You won your opener against Auburn and you beat South Carolina in the first tournament, SEC tournament. So you have shown, you know, ability to win that first game. I mean, is there an emphasis on trying to you know, put your, your, your best foot forward and stay in the winner's break as long as you can, obviously. 
Well, every every game this from here on out for the rest of the season will be our best foot forward. We'll be going with our best nine, ten um, every game here on out. Um, if it takes one pitcher the whole way, it's one pitcher, which I don't think that's who we are, and that's never what we've been. But you know, if somebody gets hot, um, we're going to go with it. You know, I mean, we have a couple of hitters on the bench that have done some really nice things lately that um, they, they've shown to be hot and they're going to get a chance, you know, Allie Newland's like three for three in her last three pinch hit at bats. So, um, she's going to get a shot here. So it's the best that we have that we're throwing at them every game. Um, every opportunity we get, they're going to see the best we've got. I think everyone in this tournament this weekend deserves that. They're all talented. They're all good. We all know the McNeese name. We all know the ULL name. Maybe you don't know George Washington's name, but they've had a incredible season um and they really swing the bats well have some really talented players too has it always been a thought like philosophically that you're going to probably you know, usually you see better pitching lower scoring games so less room for error you know that you've got to be tight on defense and make plays when you got the chance you know run when scores runners in scoring position get them home i do think that our our defense has to keep us in games um, they just have to give us a chance. You know, I think our defense has to play good defense. We can't give out free passes both on the mound and defensively. I think um, they've got to kind of be our fallback. Like that's what our go-to, like that's our consistent spot. Um, and then they give us a chance to pitch out of situations and to score some runs. In all your years involved in this, do you see the talent just growing more? I mean, Jenna Cohn is one of the best hitters in the country with GW McNeese has tremendous talent there. And you've been a part of that, you know, in the past where you were the head coach at FIU and assistant at Houston. How do you compare the growth of the game and the talent level to your point? GW is as good as anybody here. They're a big threat here as well as McNeese. Yeah, they are. And I think, you know, locally, like I said, their name might not be as known, but um, in their area, they're a big deal. I mean, you can watch them play in their conference tournament. You could just see the other team's responses. They're the ones they're trying to get, you know, they're the ones with the, with the target on their back. So um, I, I think that there's a lot more parity in the game. I think there's great players everywhere. Um, I think this year too, with expanded rosters and people having more depth, it's kind of like super year for softball, super softball year, you know? Um, so I think everybody has someone else to go to They're deeper. Um, so it's going to be fun. This whole postseason is going to be a lot of great softball games. Um, if I wasn't coaching, I would surely be a fan watching these girls compete because these women are incredible and deserve attention from all over the country. What do you tell your team, especially the players that haven't been through this? There are 18 to 22 year olds, you know, a lot of talk of obviously the postseason, the spotlight. How do you keep them even keel uh, and saying, hey, this is just another game? Yeah, it's something we've honestly tried to address every day in some different way, shape, or form. Um, you know, we had Brian King get on and talk to him, our mental coach this week, too. Like, we've tried to address this every day as much as we can, just playing the same game that you've always played. Um, you've been in tough spots, just trying to remind them of all the reasons why they should be confident, um, trying to get them to laugh and smile. That always keeps people loose. I think we're playing better when we're that kind of team. We always call ourselves can't beat crazy. Um, I think we're better when we are that team that is loud and crazy. That's just, I mean, that's who we are at LSU. Um, that's kind of our MO. It always has been. Um, so I think we're better when we're loose and we're fun. So um, we just try to keep them enjoying it. And we talked today. I mean, we're going to be the best team in a lot of ways. We're going to be the best hacky sackers before the game. Even we're going to be, you know, like we're going to just try to keep it how we always keep it, enjoy it, have fun, just play our best. And, and whatever happens at the end of it, if we play hard, we'll sleep well.